What's going on there guys? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this Thursday evening, August 19, 2021 to date, about 9, 10 p.m. West Coast time in California. Latest quake on the globe looks to be a 2.6 earthquake right around the Puerto Rico area. Uh, quite a bit of movement uh, ramping up down there right now. Check out the latest earthquake map here from the USGS 2.5 and above. Let's go ahead and go all magnitudes for the US uh, and Puerto Rico area. Zoom in and check out the earthquake activity ramping up on the southwest area. Once again, kind of comes and goes. Today is one of those days where it uh, is coming on pretty good. Quite a few t uh, twos and threes kicking off there. Not a whole lot of movement up here around the Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico trench area. Looks like a little lone earthquake a 3.5 away from the Puerto Rico area um, at a depth of about looks like about 15 kilometers or so uh, for that earthquake big picture big story once again down here along the subduction zone of the South Sandwich Trench still kicking up folks I mean we're looking at uh, 13 earthquakes of uh, at least well above 4.5 quite a few fives in there most of them are fives uh, no sixes today, but uh, man, I tell you what, there's definitely uh, some crazy movement taking place here over the last, this is seven days of activity. And this does not include the uh, 7.5 and the uh, eight pointer earthquake that struck down here. We would have to, well, we'd have to bring this up to see all of that. If we look at the activity over the last 30 days, okay, this is 30 days of activity. Most of it uh, kicking off roughly after the 7.5 and 8.1. There was some prior earthquake activity within the vicinity, uh, but nothing like we're seeing after those two ma uh, those two big quakes. So 177 earthquakes. That's a lot of movement. And these aren't no microquakes. These are not little bitty ones. These are mostly fives and fours and sixes and um, all sorts of movement taking place here in this area. The aftershock sequence that we're looking at uh, is, you know, it's it's uh, still pretty impressive. Let me tell you, get a little bit of movement outside of the subduction zone, a little bit closer to the surface, could be a uh, uh, sign of impending pressure in this area. Um, you know, a subduction zone quakes can uh, they can come and go and stop and start uh, depending on the pressure and, and how much uh, buildup of stress is down here in this zone uh, on any given day. Still seeing some deeper activity uh, into the southwest or the southern area down here, 80 kilometers uh, for that 5.2. So still quite a bit of movement taking place here in the South Sandwich Islands area, folks. Just keeping an eye on it. Uh, for now, we did see a little bit of movement uh, near Japan, a little bit of activity up here along the trench region. 5.2, right smack dab. Looks like uh, right into the trench. Some deeper movement down here to the south. Uh, 4.2 striking just to the, uh, well, just off the coast there of Japan at 52 kilometers for that earthquake. And some activity ramping up around the uh, Alaska area as well. A little bit of movement along the Aleutian Trench, uh, but nothing really to write home about. Some activity. Let's see what do we got there. Little little activity. Microquakes kicking off in the, this portion of Alaska. Looks like that may be uh, just aftershock activity following a 4.1 near McCarthy, Alaska. Uh, earlier. Uh, what do we got down here into the Pacific Northwest? A little bit of uh, movement taking place here around the Seattle area once again, right around the Seattle Fault. That's this little fault system that runs uh, west to east, east to west. It's movement along the, uh, or at least around the Mount St. Helens area as well. Shooting down in Oregon. Oregon remains very quiet, very quiet. Northern California as well. Not a whole lot of movement along the Cascadia. A little 
little bit of movement off the coast here of uh, California around uh, Bodega Bay, just off of the San Andreas Fault System. A couple small microquakes kicking off there. And uh, some movement out and about. Uh, what do we got going on out here in the Carson City area, just southeast of Carson City? A little swarm, well, can't say it's swarming because I see a main quake. I guess that's a main quake, right? We'll call it the main quake for now. 3.3 striking out in the desert with a few follow-up aftershocks in the microquake range. Antelope Valley area seen some uh, some continued aftershock activity. Uh, that stuff could continue for years. I'm not even joking. Uh, Nevada around the uh, looks like Mina, Nevada area getting uh, some movement. I think it's Mina, right? Let me see here. Coaldale, Tonopah, okay. Yeah, this is the area I visited there uh, last year, or was it this year? I can't remember, good lord. <laughs> My time's getting all mixed up. But uh, yeah, it's still some aftershock activity out there in the desert, uh, along with the Ridgecrest area. This is, man, this has just been continuing. I, I'd like to get a total tally of all the aftershocks and earthquakes that have happened in this region since the, uh, the two years ago, the uh, July 4th, July 5th earthquakes. I mean, it's got to be up into the hundreds of thousands of earthquakes by now. Garlock Fault. Uh, looks like they're trying to activate it a little bit there with an explosion. 1.3 query blast. A little bit of movement south there of uh, the actual fault, the sheer fault. Some deep movement too, 13 kilometers for a 1.2. Southern part of San Andreas Fault, pretty quiet. Uh, not a whole lot of movement along the San Jacinto Fault area. Some swarming once again going on out here near Ocotello uh, Will, Wells. We're kind of watching that activity last night. Uh, let's see what we got here. Where's the all magnitudes map? We've got about 35 earthquakes or so kicking up. Uh, looks like 3.4, 3.8, 4.0. You know, it's hard to say if these are main shake or uh, aftershocks or just a just a pretty good swarm kicking off here. Kind of think I think it's a ladder, just a, a swarm. Uh, definitely ramping up right now in that area. Looking at the satellite view, or at least the uh, topography of the land, doesn't show a whole lot out there. I don't see any fracking operations. Not for sure what this is up here. Kind of looks like... I don't know what that is. Maybe some type of solar farm. Kind of odd. But uh, this little swarm is uh, away from there by a couple thousand feet. Alrighty, uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's get off this uh, satellite view real quick. Go back to the uh, terrain, terrain, terrain. All magnitudes here. Down into the desert southwest, pretty quiet. A little bit of movement into the Texas area. Around the Pecos, Texas area once again. Just some quakes kicking off up there. Uh, and also some movement eastern Oklahoma into the New Madrid fault system. This thing's been kind of active recently with a few uh, few quakes kicking off. Let's check out the all magnitudes uh, last 30 days or so in this area of the uh, New Madrid fault system. Looks pretty active. 27 earthquakes within that region and uh, it's kind of showing that fracture area. Uh, pretty significant hazard area when it comes to producing some uh, major and damaging earthquakes. Most of this activity below the 2.5 threshold. Looks like there was a 2.5 in that mix. Uh, but still kind of keeping an eye on it. Uh, definitely don't believe this is a dead fault. It's very active. Uh, just not as active as um, well, California and other areas uh, where fault systems exist. Uh, pretty quiet along the East Coast. And there's the activity in Puerto Rico. South America, very quiet today over the last 24 hours. 
into um, Hawaii, Look, looking at some further movement along the southeast flank once again, and also some activity kicking up around the Kilauea uh, crater area. Just a couple small microquakes somewhat at the surface, uh, but other than that, no major news to report in the Hawaii, uh, the Big Island area. A little bit of movement around the uh, Fiji Islands as well, and the Indonesia area. But uh, hot topic, keep an eye on the South Sandwich area, folks. I love sandwiches, but man, these folks here are definitely getting a lot of shaking going on uh, in this area. Just still kind of keep an eye on this subduction zone region. The trimmer map, what do you know? Another day of zero trimmers being reported by the PNSN.org network. Kind of odd, kind of strange. Uh, Yellowstone National, well, before we go to Yellowstone, let's check out the... Uh, I wanted to check out Mount St. Helens, the uh, seismic graph here. Ah, because there was a little bit of activity showing up on the USGS map. Yeah, there's some, uh, there's definitely some activity kicking up there. There's some of the activity being reported by the USGS, some of these stronger quakes. I shouldn't say strong because they're really not strong. Um... Let's go back and see what the USGS was reporting them as. All magnitudes here. Looks like, uh, yeah, very small, below 1.0. So a lot of these quakes are definitely uh, very tiny. And some of these other ones that you're seeing, these little spikes are even smaller. Um, so maybe they haven't uh, reported uh, obviously, they haven't reported those yet. Some activity is there on, on this day as well over the past couple hours. Looks like they've amplified the uh, measurement of the seismograph um, station because you can see the wavier lines indicating a, a more defined look at the activity taking place there around uh, Mount St. Helens Dome area. So a little bit of activity kicking up there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Not a whole lot of movement. Kind of looking at this activity over here around Mirror Lake, Pelican Cove, Lake Butte. All this activity showing up on quite a few stations, but not showing up on the vicinity here of these other stations. To me, I think, uh, I was looking at this, I was thinking, well, maybe it could be weather, but it's not weather at the moment. Uh, I was looking at uh, the radar in the Yellowstone area. This is Yellowstone, uh, Lake Yellowstone area. Line of thunderstorms kind of spinning around here, uh, producing quite a bit of lightning strikes, but it's a ways away from the uh, seismographs that I was showing you there on the map. Um, so I can't be, I, I can't 100% say what it is. I don't think it's volcanic. Uh, it looks like it could be some amplification into the seismograph itself uh, looks like a little adjustment began right there you can kind of see where that took where, where that struck but uh, whatever it is definitely affecting other stations as well but it, it's hard to say folks it could be wind I know there's probably a lot of wind um, what's the word I'm looking for, ahead of the thunderstorms that are taking place way down here in the southeast. Uh, like I say, it's not sh it's only showing up on these distinct stations here. It's not showing up, not even in, in a little fashion on, on these other stations here. So, although this one here too, it's kind of picking it up. But it's not picking it up on these stations in between. So, kind of weird, kind of odd. Um, I don't think it's earthquake related or volcanic related, um, either interference, wind, it's hard to say. But I will be keeping an eye on it um, overnight and uh, see what takes place there. Uh, what else we got here, folks? A little bit of movement on these, well, a little bit of movement. Sunquakes, right? <laughs> Some sun activity kicking off. A uh, little article here by spaceweather.com of a huge solar filament on the sun. Uh, the biggest thing on the sun today is not a sunspot, it's a dark filament. 
of mag magnetis <laughs> let me spit it out here magnetism okay i'm probably not going to pronounce that correctly um uh, it's late it's past my bedtime anyway this thing is stretching across more than 350,000 kilometers from end to end um looking at this image is pretty impressive that's it right there you can see this thing it's actually cooler this is uh, kind of like a oh i had a page pulled up here kind of give give you guys a little bit better um hold on a second here i don't know where it went to oh here we go uh it's relatively cool it looks like according to the space weather compared to the surface of the sun uh, it's dense gas suspended above the surface of the sun so that's kind of what we're seeing there this is a little bit different uh, image on the sun from uh, um, from a different year but man that's that's pretty impressive sometimes these things collapse uh, fall back down and produce a, a CME so we'll have to keep an eye on that but there is a really cool article on the space weather about it it kind of talks about the uh, hydro flares and whatnot and hurling CMEs into space if they do collapse. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, far as distinct solar sunspots at the moment, uh, looks like some B flares. Is that even worth noting? Not a whole lot uh, going on on the sun as far as that activity goes. You can see the coronal hole up here where the uh, filament is couple sunspots blasting over there um, another coronal hole down here maybe a little one facing us here soon but uh, overall looks like uh, activity in the uh, green zone for now not a whole lot kicking up only a 10 percent chance of a solar flare uh, and that's a C flare category all right folks I'm gonna jump off here have a good night stay safe out there just kind of um, crazy all i know is the world's getting crazy folks every time i jump on social media or, or turn on the news it's it's getting scary out there let me tell you but i guess all these things need to happen have a good night folks we'll chat you guys a little bit later stay safe